This video is brought to you by Law Excellence IAS Academy. Dear students, good morning. Let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 12th April 2019. The first article, A Crisis That Resists Hasty Solutions. This is about the most controversial event in Europe now that is Brexit. The Brexit what it refers to, the Britons exit from European Union. So this is facilitated by a treaty. The treaty is called as Lisbon Treaty. So there is an article 50 in the Lisbon Treaty which allows a member state of the European Union to withdraw from it as per its constitutional requirements. This particular article 50, once it is invoked or notified, there will be two years time for the respective country to move out of the European Union. And it needs the approval of the European Council and European Parliament. So, why this Brexit has come up in England? Remember carefully, at that point of time, the immigration was in peak. So, the open borders that were existing among European countries has made a refugee crisis a big challenge. At the same time, the Britain was very much threatened with the loss of jobs, loss of community, etc. So, here the proponents of the Brexit, what did they say? Let the UK take back the control. It means UK sovereignty got undermined because of its membership to European Union. Let it make its own laws. Let it make its own conditions on its boundaries. This is what is the slogan. And the second, the Brussels, the European Union, is getting undue money from the Britain. UK is paying huge money. So, let's not pay that. Let us save our own money. And finally, UK needs to expand its trade beyond the European Union. So, it has to ink its own trade deals. So, expansion of the European Union to Eastern Europe was also a problem to UK. So, France, UK, all these Western European countries were opposing bringing Romania, Poland into the European Union. So, in this context, a referendum was held. In this referendum, the Britain and Wales. These have supported the Brexit with a narrow margin. On the other side, Scotland and Ireland, Northern Ireland, these have opposed the Brexit. They wanted to continue as the members of European Union. Now, if once the Brexit has come into existence, it is about to become reality. These are the consequences. So, a deal has to be approved. Who has to prepare the deal? UK cabinet has to prepare the deal and negotiate the same deal with the European Union. So European summit and UK cabinet once they appeal the deal, a withdrawal agreement will be put for the UK parliament's approval. So this is where the thing struck now. Once the UK parliament votes on the withdrawal agreement, if it agrees for it, then a bill will be introduced. What is that bill? European Union Withdrawal Agreement Bill. So this bill once it is introduced and passed then it has to go for the European Parliament and 20 countries having at least population of 65% has to approve to that then the Brexit deal will be complete. A transition phase will come into existence. So this is the process if everything goes smooth. So first a draft draft agreement has to be made. It need to be put for the approval of the UK Parliament and Brexit uh, withdrawal bill has to be introduced. Once it is agreed by the UK, it also need to be agreed by the European Union Parliament with 20 members or 65% of the population shall agree to it. Now if it is not agreed, what are the chances? So UK has to leave without any deal or it has to renegotiate with the European Union or there has to be a second referendum or there has to be general elections. As of now it appears that UK Parliament is not agreeing to the existing withdrawal agreement. It means the danger of UK leaving the European Union without any deal is going to be a reality. That's going to be a nightmare for everyone. Now let's further go into this. So, as Scotland and Ireland, Northern Ireland, did not agree for any Brexit, how they are going to uh, uh, deal with this withdrawal agreement? 
so especially with regard to ireland it is going to be a big problem so between northern ireland which is part of uk and the republic of ireland a hard border has to come into existence this hard border is going to divide the people further so if a soft border is created obviously so the goods will be freely moving between northern ireland and republic of ireland and there is a free movement of goods between uh, the england and northern ireland it means automatically the brexit becomes useless so these are the problems that are existing as of now and the next don't a uh, deep regret is simply not good enough this is about jillian wallabag you know that the british government has passed an act which is called a rowlet act and this rowlet act has taken away the habeas corpus and a person can be arrested without any grounds and without any information it is taking away the right to life and liberty of the citizens so against this rowlet act a peaceful gathering on baisakhi day in amritsar has led to a brutal violence by the police so under this rowlet act two important leaders satyapal and saifuddin kichlu these were arrested by the police a silent protest was happening against it and police under the direction of general dyer has fired against this uh, against this grouping and finally it led to the death of around 500 people so this has said to be the worst massacre by the british in india though there are others against kuka rebellion this did not come into open but this sees in in a city in a closed space against a peaceful uh, gathering this happened so in this context tagore gave his, away his knighthood and mr uddam singh has killed general ward dwyer remember he did not kill dyer it is dwyer this dwyer is the lieutenant governor of the punjab at that point of time and hunter commission was appointed uh, and all these failed to find fault with mr uh, general dyer in this case there is morning post a conservative newspaper it even collected the donations in support of the general dyer the worst is rudyard kipling uh, spoke about this particular event and tried to take or give support to general dyer and it has been clearly stated that he did what he has to do that kind of attitude was shown so from all this it appears that um, the british were very insensitive about the massive killings of the people so after 100 years british prime minister theresa may she just used the word deep regret she did not state uh, sincere apologies it is contrast to canada's apology to komgata maru incident so when people on this ship were supposed to be boarded on canada they did not allow them to leave the ship and finally turned the ship back when they are uh, coming back at calcutta the gun firing happened with the british officials led to the death of the people so this gadarite movement uh, and it has got significant history and canada later has given its de- uh, 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 given its deep regrets and also sorry for the event but it is not the same case with the uk now it has just stated deep regrets rather than sincere apologies netanyahu who's israel you know israel actually did not have an existence before world war 2 so during uh, or after the world war 1 there was belfort agreement and according to that israel that is jewish people has to be given land and finally they were settled in the present day israel so later the origins of the israels have strong overtones in socialistic pattern of life the first prime minister david ben gurion was more accommodative of different interests compared to the present regime so today if you see mr trump was or is unequivocally supporting the israel so the two state theory or two state solution which painstakingly brought in the global scenario is no more appears to be working mr trump he has shifted american consulate to jerusalem recognizing the jerusalem as the capital of israel and the second thing he also has recognized the sovereignty of israel over golan heights this has paved way for the success of netanyahu in elections and the second 
raising the rightist and conservative overtones netanyahu what he stated um, he will try to extend the israel sovereignty over jewish settlements in west bank so in the two state theory the gaza strip and west bank are expected to be the part of the new palestine that has to be created by extending the sovereignty of israel over the jewish settlements in west bank is oblic threat to the two nation two state solution and the next is with just 35 seats how netanyahu's party likud party is able to get the prime minister's position is able to establish its uh, cabinet remember in neset that is the parliament of israel the proportional representation works in india it is first past the post system in uh, uh, israel it is proportional representation so always in israel what exists are the coalition governments so though netanyahu's party got only 35 seats most of the right wing parties are in support of the netanyahu that's the reason why he was able to become the prime minister for the fifth term however it is not good for the peace between israel and palestine at the camp david uh, agreement or accord land for peace peace is the slogan this is the foundation for two state theory and under netanyahu who israel declared itself as a nation state of jewish people in that way it is it appears as a country that has officially recognized apartheid of the muslims so that's how this article states it is is india's anti satellite test a game changer you know that under operation mission shakti india test fired an anti satellite missile to destroy a satellite in the low earth orbit so it is in the low earth orbit that is 300 kilometers above the earth on the other hand it is stated that china it can uh, or, and other countries have ability to destroy a satellite a communication satellite um, 36000 kilometers above the surface of the earth it means india's deterrence effect through anti satellite test is still a myth and the second the space debris is a major challenge so india tried to test its missile in the low earth orbit to minimize the space debris but Russia, China, USA they moved away from the anti satellite missiles missiles into laser weapons and also the cyber weapons so these laser weapons will be orbiting the uh, in the orbiting the in the earth in the same satellite orbit and they will be passing the laser beams to kill the satellite and or they depower the satellite by breaking the power systems over there so the debris is minimized or totally absent through this laser weaponization but india did not have the technology at all and the third thing is the space commerce of india it is because of its cheap cost and most of the foreign satellites which are placed by india in the space are in the low earth orbits and they are remote sensing the real money lies in space commerce in the communication satellites india did not achieve that particular cut off point to be ben- uh, to be to commercialize the communication satellites so our communication satellites need to be further improved and india has stated that it wants to protect its space assets india is now launching many of the military satellites and anti satellite mission is an attempt to, to deter other countries to destroy the india space installations so it has raised deterrence as a ground for firing this particular missile so further to this the peaceful use of the space there are two things we need to understand demilitarization of the space deweaponization of the space there is a distinct difference between these two demilitarization of the space it means some space shall not be used for any military purposes it means uh, you shall not keep any military satellites in the space uh, but however almost uh, all the developed countries and few of the developing countries are using the space for tracking various unmanned aerial vehicles uh, to provide directions uh, through gps etc so the demilitarization is of no returning point so deweaponization it means using anti satellite missiles uh, or keeping the weapons itself in the space uh, all these things can be resisted so india can work towards deweaponization of the space or peaceful use of the space but what is the country which is opposing to this 
USA. USA is a dominant force in the space and is not willing to have any enforceable treaty for peaceful use of the space as of now. And finally, it can be stated that um, the anti-satellite missile of India is kind of a beginning for India's uh, position in the elitist club along with Russia, China and USA. But there is a long way for India to go in this. India on the other side can work for peaceful use of the space and India has to join with China etc on this. With regard to the commercial front and also technological front, India is far behind China. China is expected to create its own space station by 2020. By the time International Space Station is expected to end its life. So there is a long space, long journey for India in the space program. Fighting the fake news. So you know that today's major problem is alternative facts or post-truth world or fake news. So in this context, how shall we fight the fake news? So here, constant vigilance. It means every platform owner, either it is YouTube or Google or for that matter, Facebook, Twitter, they have to keep a constant vigilance on their platform. So the fact checking is one way. And then legal foundations, a strong laws are necessary. So in India, we have the laws to control the fake news on uh, print media and the electronic media. So there are certain independent regulatory mechanisms, uh, but no such independent regulatory mechanisms exist for social media. And the second is, the legal vacuum is clearly visible. The section 126 prohibits any advertisements uh, 48 hours before election. But it, do, it is unable to cover the social media platforms. And after that, let's make the platform owners responsible for their failure to remove the reported news. It means if there is a fake news in YouTube or Facebook, if it is not removed, then if it is reported and not removed, the huge penalties can be imposed on that platform owner like Facebook. So Germany does that. For India, there are many jurisdictional issues. If you take Facebook, it is a registered company in California. So how Indian law enforcement agencies can take over these, can control or regulate these, the agencies or these platform owners is a big question for India. So these are the issues with regard to the fake news. And then closed road. After Pulwama attack, National Highway 44 is closed for civilian tra traffic. It is opened uh, sporadically and most of the times uh, the people are facing difficulties. This NH44 is the lifeline of Jammu and Kashmir. It runs from Udampur in Jammu to Baramulla in Kashmir. So all the essential goods and services has to run through this lifeline. So there is a lot of resistance from the people as their life is being struck. And in the winter the things are going to be much worse. Whenever we are restricting the movement and rights of the people, it can lead to further alienation. And the second is, the freedom of movement is also a fundamental right. In the name of the security of the nation, reasonable restrictions can be imposed. But threatening the life and liberty through these reasonable restrictions is unwarranted. These kind of restrictions will further promote hatred and alienation towards the civic and uh, military officials uh, rather than integrating them with the uh, India. The next, India stares at a pile of solar e-waste. As of now, 2 lakh tons by 2013 e solar e-waste is expected and the solar waste consists of chromium next uh, cadmium selenium sulfur hexafluoride silicon tetrachloride etc these are harmful so by 2050 1.8 million tons are expected to accumulate so as we are moving towards the renewables uh, india also needs to have a policy towards the solar e-waste Amisha was to bring in nationwide NRC. So national, this register of the citizens, which was implemented in Assam, was a chaos. And it was meant to eliminate illegal immigrants. Now Mr. Amitsa states that the same NRC will be implemented throughout the length and breadth of the country to eliminate the illegal immigrants. So the contours of his promise are not yet clear, but it appears that um, the BJP is on its way to build the Hindu Rastram. 
it is trying to build that but it's too an extreme statement but nrc kind of a project is unwarranted in a country such as india and the second thing is article 370 of the constitution he has unequivocally said that article 370 can be removed in this case article 370 is considered as an umbilical cord between jammu and kashmir and the indian union so if article 370 is removed without constituting jammu and kashmir constitution assembly then it can uh, bring in the the it can strengthen the forces of uh, alienation and forces of detachment from india so separatist forces will get a strong hand strong voice and the next is voters need not know sources of party funding so this is about electoral bonds so why the electoral bonds were introduced the government argues to eliminate black money in electoral funding so the cash donations are leading to who black money so bringing in banking transactions will eliminate the cash in political party funding but it's in half truth why so the electoral bonds and their existence do not do away with cash donations to the political party the first thing and what can eliminate the black money and what can make the people to make informed decisions it is transparency so in the cover of anonymity the transparency is dying so electoral bonds provide for greater anonymity so this is what the election commission's argument is WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange arrested in London so he is expected to be sent to United States of America where he is expected to face uh, law so Mr Julian Assange WikiLeaks uh, exposed the Mr Miss Manning's uh, Chelsea Manning's leakages in 2010 it's kind of entire United States and surveillance system uh in the united states against its own citizens was exposed by these leaks so under official secrets act he is going to be arrested and put in jail in the united states of america and finally thank you very much all the best have a good day